I hate reading and I think school is the reason why. Because rather than inspiring me to read, I was pushed further away. It wasn't until after I started to force myself to read that I see why every successful person read books. I'd encourage people to read a lot of books. Why reading is so heavily recommended in the personal finance and personal development space to the extent that it has become a cliche. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. In fact, I'm a lot more proud of these seven new bookshelves that I had to get installed. How the true value of reading has become so lost and so misunderstood that it has been represented as a distraction from taking action. I feel like it's a higher form of Netflix to me. I know so many people that do this. They'll spend all their time reading or watching. They're just constantly trying to learn. But never taking action. There's no action, yeah. I'm going to fix all of this. I'm going to tell you what everyone else has failed to do so. And perhaps after this video, you'll see the same revelations I did. So, let's go back to where it started. School. Do you remember sitting in class staring blankly at a book you were supposed to be reading? Instead of deciphering the hidden meaning like you are meant to, you would daydream about how you would save the day if a gunman walked through the door. Because any story I could conjure in my mind was much, much more entertaining than any crap George Orwell was making up. I mean, if Orwell just got to the point, maybe I couldn't go into my math homework earlier. That's relatable, right? At least I understood why I was learning math. Numbers are the language of the universe. And to become more proficient at that language makes me more capable of understanding the world around me. It brings me closer to my goal of solving problems. But in the case of reading, I never understood what the purpose was. It was just this arbitrary chore that didn't offer any value at all. They're just words on paper. There's nothing useful about them. As far as I was concerned, if I could understand people and they could understand me, then what's the problem? And no one could explain to me otherwise. So I made a rule. Reading is not relevant to my life. As it turns out, that rule was wrong. When I entered my second year of university, I started to become more interested in personal development. After watching different YouTube videos, making new friends, I started to get exposed to different types of books. Books that school never told me about, you know, books that I was actually interested in. Books about science, personal development, history, finance, and investing. Yes, they were still just words on paper, but these words carried useful information. Information I could use to improve my life. All of a sudden, reading became relevant. After reading book after book, I started to notice a, should we call it a spillover effect? I wish one of my teachers told me reading has this effect on the brain, because it would have shattered the belief I had about reading. Here it is. What school never told you. Reading improves your communication skills. I know how it sounds. But stick with me here, because improving this skill could be one of the most powerful things you ever do. When I was younger, I often found it difficult to express what I was thinking verbally and in writing. I will have these ideas and thoughts, but I will struggle to decompose these concepts into words, and then strategically reassemble them in a grammatically correct order that would efficiently convey what I wanted to say. As I started to read more, this process became more intuitive. Over time, I began to associate new qualities with myself. Qualities like intelligent, articulate, self-aware, thoughtful, critical. I begin to wonder, perhaps I have the capacity to inspire others. That my friend is the greatest superpower you can ever develop. The ability to inspire others. Consider for a moment who comes to mind when you think of a great communicator. They most likely had an impact on you. Perhaps they inspired you in some way. Take Steve Jobs as an example. Steve was a masterful communicator. He expressed his ideas clearly and succinctly. He was able to weave stories into his talks to incite an emotion within the audience. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path and that will make all the difference. It was with this ability that he was able to transform his vision into one of the most successful companies we have ever seen. Think about it. You need to convince investors to believe in you and the product. You need to convince the most talented people in the world to work for you. Finally, you need to convince the consumer market to spend their money on your product. 
It's basically an impossible task. But it's the only way businesses find success. At their core, businesses are successful because of their ability to influence thousands, if not millions of people to their desired outcomes. This is how people like Simon Sinek, Tony Robbins, and Jordan Peterson can build businesses where they are the product. They have developed their communication skills to the level where they can assert themselves as leaders. And if done effectively, people will follow. This is the basis of influence marketing for better or for worse. The amazing thing is this applies for you too in every aspect of life. You want a new job? Great. Tell a compelling story about what you can offer. You want a promotion? Cool. Convince your boss you deserve it. You want to take that girl on a date? Sweet. Give her a reason to give you her number. The people who get what they want do two things. One, they ask for it. And two, they ask for it more effectively than everyone else. If you're watching this right now and you're thinking, man, I never get what I want. Well, then you might not be communicating yourself as clearly as you could be. So how do we fix that? Read more. Here's why. When you read, you observe the spelling of words, how words fit into sentences, how the sentences fit into paragraphs, how the paragraphs fit into the section of the book, how the section of the book fits into the core idea of the book. This makes you a better writer. Because writing is actually the same process as reading, except you start with an idea. You decompose that idea into arguments. The arguments into paragraphs, paragraphs into sentences, and then sentences into words. There's very little difference between writing and thinking. But when you read, you're witnessing the way an expert organizes their thoughts. How well their message sticks to you is an indicator of how effectively they were able to communicate their ideas. If you continue to read regularly, over time you'll gear your brain to analyze and present information in a clear and methodical way, which makes you a more capable person when trying to solve problems and increases your potential to inspire other people around you. History actually shows us the impact of people becoming literate has on the world. We just need to look at the printing press made by Gutenberg around 1436. Mark Twain, the famous American writer, gave a testament for the invention's significance during the opening of the Gutenberg Museum in Maine. In the letter he wrote, Gutenberg's invention has supplied both earth and hell with new occurrences, new wonders, and new phases. What the world is today, good and bad, it owes to Gutenberg. Everything can be traced to this source. Before Gutenberg's invention, everything had to be written by hand. Since literacy rates in the Middle Ages were so low, only the elite had access to reading and writing. Knowledge was very much kept under the control of the church. But the church supported the development of the printing press. The rulers figured if exact copies of the Bible could be made, then the word of God could spread even further across Europe. And with that, the Gutenberg Bible was printed. Soon, printing houses popped up all over Europe. Within 50 years, these machines would print over 20 million books. Information about science, medicine, and art became widely accessible. As people learned how to read and write, these ideas were applied. Innovation increased, technology expanded, and with it, the economy grew. New ideas, new ways of thinking, new skill sets led to a brand new array of problems being solved. It was here that the scene for the Enlightenment was set. And well, you know the rest of the story. Reading made us who we are today. Not because of the information transported through time and space, but because of the way it changed our minds. The changes in the way we process information. The continual iteration to find more effective ways to communicate information to others. If you can stand tall and inspire action from others, opportunities will land at your feet. We have seen this in history, we see it today, and we will see it into the future. But here's the catch. Reading is the first step. You have to practice what you read. That means writing more. Practice formulating your ideas into arguments. Test the effectiveness of those arguments against others. Use that feedback to generate better arguments. Perhaps you'll find yourself getting what you want more often. Even though I still hate reading, I continue to do it. There is still plenty of knowledge to gain and my communication skills are far from where I want them to be. Seeing this video would have undoubtedly fast-tracked my reading journey, because school does a terrible job of explaining why you are learning something. 
One thing I've learned about inspiring others is that in order to get them to do something, they have to want to do it, which means they need to understand why it is important. So I hope I achieved my goal of explaining the importance of reading, something that was never explained to me. But there's one more thing. We currently live in a world where books are not the only way to receive information. Another popular medium is podcasts. So if you're a listener of podcasts, you may be interested in the sneaky tactic podcasts use to suck you in. 